Hi everyone, my name's Fiona Hardy and I'm the author of How to Make a Movie in 12 Days and my new book, How to Write the Soundtrack to Your Life. Now this is the story of Murphy Parker. Now she's a kid who loves playing the keyboard, has always loved it, loved that amazing creativity that she's felt every time she's written a new song. But nobody really knows this about her because she's really shy and she doesn't want to share it with anybody that she knows. One day, it's accidentally revealed in music class that she is a good musician and everybody hears this song that she plays and is massively impressed. But then, just the next day, everyone discovers a song that's almost exactly the same, except with different words, and everybody accuses her of stealing the song. But she wasn't the one who stole the song. Somebody stole it from her. But how can she prove that when nobody's ever heard her play before and her friends are essentially useless? Well, that's kind of the story of this, of this story. And now I'm going to read you the first chapter, which is called How to Disappear Completely. Now, every chapter in this story, every chapter in this book is named after a song, some of which you might have heard of, some of which you might not realise you'd heard of, and others that might be completely new. I knew something was up as soon as I saw my teacher's face after lunch. It was a type of face that said there was either about to be a murder or a long-term substitute teacher. Right, said Mr Skier before we'd even gone into class. As punishment for playing floor is lava barefoot on the asphalt in summer in Australia, which ended up with six of you in the sick bay, guess what? The whole class has an extra group assignment to do. But I didn't play, Marcy shouted. Tom hollered, that's illegal. But I'm already suffering, yelled Mario, who had his bandaged feet up on the chair next to him. But I hate group assignments, I yelled internally. Externally, the best I could do was a loud pout. No, Marcy, you didn't play, but now you won't in future either. Tom, I know you want to be a lawyer one day, so I'll give you a free lesson. It's not really illegal. Mario, maybe our group assignment will help you understand why it was a terrible, terrible idea to play Floor is Lava. Great success. We're going to do an assignment on heat distribution. Hooray, your labor. Who only ever liked things if nobody else did? Inside, Mr. Skier sorted everyone into groups, putting an injured lava player in each one so they wouldn't be their own group dedicated solely to whining and being helpless. I was put into a group with Haley, Mario, Jill and Homer. Haley, who had directed her own movie over the school holidays, immediately said, I propose we turn this assignment into a documentary. Even though Mr. Skier literally said it has to be a poster, asked Jill, who literally always used that word. If you draw up the pictures, I'll do the colouring in, said Homer, who always pretended he was the hero for doing the least amount of work very loudly. Uh, Mario whimpered. I silently went over to the art corner and got out a few sheets of poster paper. When I got back, Jill was saying, I didn't even see what was happening. I didn't even know about it until afterwards and I'm still in trouble. How about we write an assignment about how unfair this is? I silently wrote up the top of the poster with text up, heat distribution. It hurts, Mario moaned. How about I colour inside the O, Homer said, leaning over me. How about, I said quietly, we ask Mr Skier if we can go to the library to do some research. There was silence. Did Murphy just speak, Homer said, pretending to get something out of his ear. Impossible, Mario said. She doesn't have a voice. Must have been Jill. I literally forgot we even had a library, Jill said, and leave her alone. Haley, who was not very good at listening, said, It's a good suggestion, Jill. Let's go. But my foot, Mario said pathetically. We'll help you, I announced. Put your arms around Jill and Murphy's shoulders and you can hop there. And that's how it took us ten whole minutes to travel fifty metres to the library. Inside, Jill stood helplessly in front of a computer search screen while Mario told Homer where to go find the books and Homer told Haley where to go find the books and I sighed and went to the actual right place to find the books. I thought he was supposed to rise, Mario said. Surely the ground would be the coldest place in the world. Your brain is the coldest place in the world, Homer said. Once our tables stopped being told off by the librarian for fighting, Jill said, We have to present this as well. Skia says we need to make it interesting. What does that even mean? How can we make this? She gestured at the whole poster. Interesting, when none of us even care. Have some actual information, internal Murphy said. Well, out loud Murphy stared pointedly at our still blank poster. Which I've lost my position. <laughs> I know, Haley said. If we can't make an actual movie, since we can't use iPads for this, which is unfair and cruel and probably against the law, we can still present it with a soundtrack. Murphy plays piano. Why don't you play a song for us? Everybody turned to look at me, and I tried very hard to keep my face into some kind of normal, non-screaming position. Hey, yeah, Homer said. I've seen your music. I know you can play. Do you write your own music or play other pieces? Haley asked. I heard she writes her own music, but nobody's allowed to hear it because she's got a record deal, Mario said. Jill told me. I did not, Jill said. She does write her own music, but nobody's allowed to hear it, not even her best friends. She stared at me pointedly, and I looked at the carpet. She has her own keyboard and everything. It's 
vintage. I heard nobody can hear her music because it's cursed, said Homer. Like if you listen to a song of hers, it's the last thing you ever hear. Maybe she just doesn't play because she's not very good, Mario said, which is when I got up and started walking away. One more, Mario called after me. Hey, I said maybe. And finally, I said something out loud. Bathroom. I sat on the toilet lid and took some deep breaths. It's weird when you're a quiet type person like me to think that people talk about you. I mean, I know they do. When you're a quiet type person, people just make stuff up about you instead of finding out what's the truth. Like, here are some things that everybody knows about me. One, I live with my aunt and uncle and two cousins. Two, nobody's ever seen my mother. Three, my dad comes to events and seems normal. Four, I like to play the keyboard. And five, I'm shy. And here are what some of the rumours have been over the years. One, my aunt and uncle stole me from my family. Two, my mother is dead. Three, my dad gets day release from prison. Four, if you hear one of my songs, it's the last thing you'll ever hear. Though that's relatively new since I only just heard that rumour. Five, I communicate only through my keyboard because I don't have a voice box. And here are some truths. One, I live with my aunt Ruth, uncle Pete, and my cousins Junie and Axel, and they're my family, and I don't need to be adopted. Two, my mother left my father when I was a baby because everything was too hard, and she probably lives in America, but we don't know for sure. Three, my dad is great and loves me a whole bunch, but he can't always look after me. Four, I really like to play the keyboard. And five, I can talk, but I just really don't know what to say. All of it equals a sometimes hard time at school. I mean, the kids aren't mean. At least they're not any more mean than you'd expect, but expect a bunch of kids to be after spending six hours a day together learning about geometry. And I do have friends. I have Jill and Marcy, my best friends. And they're pretty good at that job, I guess. They mostly don't let other kids be mean to me and... We all sit together at lunch where Marcy reads my palm and Jill takes six hours to eat her sandwich because she's so busy talking. It helped me to remember that Jill would be there in the library when I got back and probably would have flicked Mario in the foot to stick up for me. That cheery thought helped me piece myself together enough to wash my hands and go back to the library where at least there had been some progress in that there were some boxes and arrows on the poster and Homer was colouring it the arrows in and everyone was trying to figure out what to write in the boxes. She's back, Homer announced. I'm sorry, Mario said, rubbing his foot and glaring at Jill. I'm sure your music isn't bad. It's just that we wouldn't know since you never play anything for us. So can you write the music for us or not? Haley said. I shook my head. Well, how are we going to make the presentation interesting? Haley asked. I could do a spin on my roller skates, Jill said eagerly. I could colour in the poster with highlighter, Homer shouted. I could take off my bandage so everyone can see my blisters to represent the damage that he can do, Mario said, leaning down. Do you want me to show you now? We could actually finish the assignment first, I suggested. She speaks again, said Homer, and fell off his chair. We are literally writing it right now, said Jill, who was now braiding her hair. And it's not even slightly about movies, Haley said sadly. How can I work when I'm in this much pain, Mario asked. And for the record, this is why I never talk in class. Well, I hope you enjoyed that first chapter, and I hope you have yourself a great day. See ya!